Well, hello and welcome to episode 143 of Photo Kitchen. I am your humble host, MD Welch, and it's that time of year again. Actually, it seems like it's always that time of year again, where Adobe has yet again updated their applications. This is not a massive update for many people, but it could be an important update to you, and that's why you should stick around. First of all, we are talking about the current version of Lightroom at the time of this recording, which is version 14.3. 14.3 introduces mostly tools for landscape photographers, although people who do portrait photography may find this useful as well. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's cover the minor things. First of all, the updated lenses and lens compatibility database has been increased. You could go to Adobe's website and find out if a lens that you've just purchased is on that list. Uh, and also some recent or new cameras will be on that list as well. Not huge, but if you just bought a new camera, a new lens, that could be important to you. Uh, the first major important thing, and I can actually see this being very important for many of you that have multiple catalogs or have struggled with catalog um, integration or upkeep or management. Uh, and that seems to be a lot of people that I teach, by the way. And that is a feature found under File and Open Recent. Now, with Open Recent, you'll see all of the catalogs that you've had open recently on your computer. The problem is for many people, you only have maybe one catalog now that you're really using, maybe one or two. But you're maybe looking at a long list of catalogs that you've started and never worked with or you wish you never saw again, or they were just accidents, something like that. This is especially true for those of you who have been using Lightroom Classic for a little bit of time, and you've just now finally managed the whole catalog concept. You might need to remove items from this list, and you now have this feature called Manage Catalogs. You click on it, and then highlight the catalogs that you want to remove, and you could either remove from the recent or remove all, removing all of them from the entire recent thing. This is just going to remove the catalogs from this list. It doesn't get rid of the catalogs. And it's nice because it gives you a little date feature here and lets you know whether or not the catalog has been open recently. So you can be like, well, I haven't opened this LRC versus bridge. So let's just go ahead and remove this from the recent. And I'll ask you if I want to remove this and it will be no longer appearing in the recent section. Great. Okay. And I just have less of a laundry list. And this is good, especially for those of you who maybe use catalogs for separate clients. And now that client job is done and you don't want to look at that information anymore. Or maybe you don't want another client to see that you're working on their competitor's work. Ooh, top secret stuff. So anyways, that's step or thing number one. Uh, it's not huge, but it could be huge depending on how you manage catalogs. Uh, item number two, is uh, a very weird one, but it could make sense, and I have a good example of this. This is a camera raw image, shot in studio, white background. I'll go over to the develop module here, and I do collapse down my film strip in my uh, left-hand column. It gives me more room to work in my develop module here. And you can see I photographed this lovely model on a white background. Now, if we hop back over into the develop module, I also have a PSD, and maybe I'm wondering, did I knock out that background on the PSD? Is it transparent? One problem with Lightroom images is, is that they don't show you any sort of transparency, transparency masking, alpha masking, whatever you want to call it. So what's nice now is you can see that. However, <sighs> Adobe has made it so it could only be seen in the development module. So it doesn't help you out here. But if I hop back over to the development module, you will see the checkerboard background or the transparency mask background, whatever you want to call it. Checkerboard means that this background has been knocked out and it has been removed. So you know the background's been removed. Can you do anything with it? Can you add a layer behind it? Can you change the background here? No, nope, you can't. But at least you would know that it has a transparent background. So if you are using Lightroom Classic as also your Im image management utility, meaning that you have all of your images here and this is where you export everything out of, this would maybe be a good way to know whether or not you're about to hand somebody off a transparent background if you use the original under export uh, function or something like that. So you would have that information there. It's minor, but it's there. Okay, so those are the minor things. Also, oops, one other minor thing here that I cannot demonstrate to you, and that is features now found in Tethered Capture. Now, I tried to do this, and I'll go ahead and turn on my camera here, a little slick move off camera. There we go, I believe it's on. Let's start camera capture. Let's go ahead and click OK through here. Yes, we'll call it that. We're gonna do a test, detecting the camera. Wait for it, wait for it. There we go. And I have my little toolbar here. I'll go ahead and hit live. Now, what the feature is supposed to do, and I've removed my subject from here from doing a testing, but what it's supposed to do is give you better focus control in live view when you're in manual focusing for more accurate manual focusing. Now, what's interesting about this is that I could actually come into here and rotate my focus dial 
on my camera and do this manually through my camera as well. Um, but it's not being done through Lightroom Classic, but that's essentially what would be happening. You would just have better manual focus control for more accurate focus. Uh, I have an older Sony camera. That's what I'm going to write it off to. So there you go. All right. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and stop all of this. Okay, enough of all of that. Let's talk about the big reason why you're here, and that is the new landscape masking function inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic 14.3. Now, you might be like, I've been able to mask out landscape items before. You have, but not really. And let me show you where this has evolved from. I'm gonna select a quick portrait. I'm gonna come to the mask button in the develop module, and it will recognize people. Now, if I click on the people, it will show you it will show you the entire person. But if you click on the person, it allows you to actually select pieces of the person, facial skin, uh, hair, those kinds of things. We've had this for portraiture for a very long time inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic and also Adobe Lightroom and I'm sure Camera Raw as well. But we haven't had that for landscapes. You pretty much had, do you wanna select the sky? Do you wanna select the foreground? And that's about it. So if we select this nice little simple landscape from coastal Oregon and come to the mask icon here, we now have the ability to select landscape. So this landscape little title here, this is new in 14.3, before it just started with objects. Now when you click on landscape, what's gonna happen is it's going to generate a mask option for the landscape, and it's, then it's gonna show you the items very much like people did on a list. It's gonna show you the different things. Every image will be different. It's not just gonna show you sky, mountains, architecture, and water. If you don't have any water in the image, it's not gonna give you that. It might even show you paths, uh, artificial landscape, all these other kind of things. So you will get a list here. And when you mouse over them, you will get the red overlay color, that rubolith color, that by the way, you could change up here by clicking on this little red square, but you could uh, see this overlay knowing where the mask is going to be. So here's sky, Here's mountains, here's the architecture. It does recognize architecture. And by the way, sometimes the architecture is people. Sometimes the architecture is cars. It's not perfect, okay? But, and when you come into here, you could go ahead and select the water. So let's say for this particular image, I wanted to boost that saturation in the sky. I could just check sky, click on create mask, it will go ahead and make a new mask called mask one. You'll get the component showing that you selected the sky uh, from this element here. And then I'm just gonna come into dehaze. Conveniently, the slider is available like I did it before. Here we go, and I'll just really increase this so it's easy to see on YouTube, but obviously that's way overboard. So cool, right? It allows you to select the pieces of uh, landscapes here. Now, where this can start to uh, be a little bit imperfect is when you start to get some some blending between um, areas here. So I'm gonna come in and I have already done this image pretty much, I'm happy with the post-production on this, but I have this what I called old sky mask. So I came in and I selected this. Now the way that this was selected was the old school way of when you clicked on create mask, which you could only create additional masks through the little mask panel here, I did a select sky, right? And that's how I did the sky. And of course I had to remove what it thought was the subject, which was the uh, building here in the foreground. So that was the only way to select the actual sky and not get other items here. So I had to do some additional masking. However, now I could come in and go into select landscape and wait for it to generate its landscape thing. So there's always gonna be a pause. Now we have sky, mountains, architecture, and vegetation. Right Now take note, as I mouse over these things, you will see that sometimes the architecture is the architecture and sometimes parts of the architecture is also the vegetation. It doesn't at the moment recognize this. Now, of course, this is using artificial intelligence or machine learning or whatever that it is. Of course, it's gonna get better on every iteration of Lightroom Classic, but you could go ahead and see how well it does in selecting this. Now, an interesting thing to point out, and I'm gonna demonstrate this on another image, but sometimes when you do say select a sky, it will still include other items right? But there's a workaround for this. And I'll show you that by switching back over to another image. You could see we have a backlit subject. We have to lighten the subject. We have a blown out sky. This is a perfect image to do masking on, right? Give me just the sky. Let me darken that down. However, when we come into here and if we just did the good old fashioned select sky, you might be wondering, well, why don't we just still use that button here? If I click on that, notice that it gets a bit of the mountain range and it also gets a bit of my subject here. If I come into tone, 
in and just knock down the exposure. You can see the hat on the subject, the handle here, part of the mountain range, everything is part of that mask. So let's get rid of that. Let's delete this mask and start fresh here. Let's try the actual landscape. It's important to point out that the landscape function and the selecting of people function still exists in this image, right? It's not an either or, right? You can do both at the exact same time. So I'm gonna come in here to landscape. I'm gonna wait for the landscape to generate. Again, it's gonna take a second. And now we only have sky, we have mountains, and we have water, right? Well, here's the interesting thing. Sky has always caused issues, right? It always has. Uh, it's always kind of bled over into the mountains. But if you look at the mountains here, it does a good job of selecting the mountains. And this is my photo kitchen top tip of the day. Sometimes selecting the other thing and using it as an example is a great way to remove items or add items to a mask and get a better looking mask. So if I come into here and say, let's select the sky, let's go ahead and create that mask. And it's gonna go ahead and generate that. And let's just for, uh, let's come into effects and let's just do another dehaze here, right? Let's really crank this up. Now, let's say I'm worried about this bleed over on the mountain. See how you have this kind of edge coming down? And of course it's so excessive on the adjustment, it's easy to see. But I'm gonna come into the mask here and I'm going to subtract and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna say select landscape. And now I'm gonna say select the mountains, right? And I'll go ahead and create the mask. And now that edge has been removed because the mountains are a little bit more definable than the actual sky. And this is also true of subjects as well. Sometimes it just does a better job of selecting subjects. So if you were worried about, well, maybe just a little bit of the hat on the subject here is still getting into that, you could go to subtract and you could come in and you could say select subject and it will remove the subject from here as well, giving you an even better mask and also including a little bit of the fishing pole. The masking feature in Lightroom Classic has never been perfect, right? But if you use the add or subtract with these tools, you can get a really good um, return on your investment. It's never going to be perfect, right? If you come into here, for example, this uh, image, which I have had with the sky before, and it's never selected the area in under where the arm is touching the hat. It's always omitted that. So it's like, okay, well, what if we try this with the new tools here? Let's go ahead and create a new mask. Since there's already a mask here, we have to start fresh or start from this list, let's do select landscape here. And we'll wait for this subject to generate. And again, now we have sky, mountains, vegetation, artificial ground, interesting, there's the asphalt, and natural ground, right? And vegetation and natural ground kind of blend into each other. So you might be combining masks there if you needed to change stuff. But if, I, if you look at the sky mask here, it still doesn't select in between the arms. So again, it's not perfect, right? You're still gonna have to adjust this, but it does give you a lot more control over selecting your landscape items. It's going to make things a little bit more efficient, but don't lose track of sometimes if you have a subject, especially a person in the foreground, that might be a great way to create a better better mask by selecting the subject from the sky or the artificial landscape or the vegetation, whatever you have going on. So I think all in all, this new feature is really nice. I think if you're a landscape shooter, you're going to enjoy this feature. If you're an environmental portrait person like I am, you're going to really enjoy this feature. Don't forget about adding or subtracting to the masks to get a more accurate mask. It's going to give you something that you really like. Hey, speaking of like, now would be a great time to hit that like button if you haven't already done so. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, now would be a great time to do that. And if you have, thank you for for your support. And also please share this with anyone who may be working or struggling with Adobe Lightroom Classic. And until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from this very updated, very fresh, very digital version of Photo Kitchen.